Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back along to another episode of The Young Farmer. I am Andy, as always. I hope you're doing very well. You join me on what is a beautiful sunny day and quite calm and mild day, which is important for us because today we're putting some pre um herbicide down onto the uh, spring wheat that we drilled just uh, two days ago, actually. Now we're going to put this on. We've got quite a lot to do today. Uh, we're expecting a big arrival. Before we go too far, though, uh, we're just going to have a bit of a review of some of the new kit that we have as well. Uh, we've traded out our Land Rover. Uh, that old beautiful classic Defender turns out was a, a specifically rare model within its uh, production line, and within the production age. Uh, so I had a collector come up to me and offer me an awful lot of money for it, so we took it. Uh, and then we have acquired this uh, second hand pickup truck as well. And the great reason for this is we can fill it up in the... In the uh, the loading bay in the back, uh, so we have a fuel tank in there now, so I can go and I've got a bit of a service trailer for when I need to go into the field. Now many of you who watched the last season of The Young Farm will remember that we did um, upgrade our sprayer. We upgraded to a front uh, tank, which is the one we have here, but we also changed our sprayer on the rear. Now we had a bigger hardy sprayer, uh, that hardy sprayer was able to mount the back of the fast track. Uh, whilst that was great, it worked really well for that specific need, but what I wanted to be able to do because we are full, what I wanted to be able to do was mount it onto either tractor, so I felt it was a better idea to... Uh, about six months ago we swapped it out for the Coon here, uh, and what that allows is me to use either uh, tractor with the sprayer there, which I think is, makes a little bit more sense really from an operating standpoint. Now what we're going to do today, we're, we're going to do that one field and we need to shoot back down to the yard because there's a... we're waiting on a new delivery, um, and it's going to be pretty special as well, so... Let's watch the sprayer on those branches. So yeah, we need to get this done. Uh, we'll get it wrapped out and then we'll go and have a look see what's uh, what's arriving. Now what we're doing today, like I mentioned, we're putting a pre-emergent herbicide down here onto the uh, onto the spring wheat. The reason we're doing that is that stops any kind of broadleaf weeds coming through. Uh, stops anything that we don't want growing from growing. And then once the uh, once the wheat has established and has come through, then we can put a post-emergence down, which will do the same kind of thing, really. Uh, let's just go that way. Okay, we'll stop about there. We'll unfold this with a beautiful folding um, motion, I do believe. It really does look good. With the last little bit, how are we looking over there? Good, good, good! Okay, we're just gonna wanna knock that down a little bit, get the height about set. Perfect, and off we go. So this field won't take us too long, it's about 23 acres all in, I believe, uh, so it won't take us a great deal of time to get done. We're just going to power around this headland first off, and then we'll uh, we'll get going throughout the rest of it. And all this allows as well is just to keep it on top of the weeds, really, make sure that we're, uh, we're not going to lose the crop yield, because like I say, our inputs, um, we have to be quite controlled about what we put in there and we have to maximize the most that is possible so that's exactly what this will help us do right, so how you all doing anyway folks hope everything is going fantastically well whatever you're getting up to so you see we've got some beautiful weather around here uh, after this after we've gone back to the yard for the delivery we uh, actually we're gonna go out and jump at the fast track got some fertilizer spraying to, spreading to do as you can see the grassland around here is really starting to shoot on uh, so with that in mind, we're going to just go and make sure that some of the ground is being uh, spread. Has a bit of nitrogen in there just to kick along a little bit. Um, and that allows us, yeah, we'll be, we'll be baling, mowing and baling in no time at all, I have no doubt. So that's going to be quite fascinating to see. Uh, lots of work to do there. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to be, uh, we're really going to start to kick on soon. I'm hoping that we can get a little bit more uh, contract work. Obviously we've got our own two fields, but they're not going to require a lot of work from us once we get this in. Uh, so we'll have to see. Now with this particular corner, we've got to be a little bit careful here. That is an, uh, a water source. We don't want to get too close to that. I will not be popular if we get that contaminated. So we're just going to kind of cut this uh, corner off a little bit here. 
Excellent. Like I said, it's a nice and dry day though. Uh, this spray is going to absorb in pretty quickly uh, and would not do any rain for the next few days. So it should have a chance to soak in uh, and not run off, which is always the more important aspect. Now we're putting this on quite lightly. We're putting on about one and a half liter liters per acre. Uh, now the spray we're using can be, um, there are two options with it really, in terms of how much you can apply over a given year. You can either apply one dose of three liters an acre, or you can apply two doses of one and a half liters, which is exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, reason for that, uh, it's, as you can see right now, this is just a precautionary measure. Um, there is nothing on the ground here to suggest that we need it, but what this will do is just kind of cover us and cover our own backs, really, uh, which I think is important. So that's exactly what we're aiming for. Uh, like I said, I don't want to double our input costs straight away by putting more herbicide down than is necessary. Uh, we'll be coming back into here in... Oof, I know about three weeks with some uh, nitrogen and PK just to get the uh, crop really grown once it's established and we'll see how that looks as well. But uh, for now, it's n again, it's not really necessary. Ooh, out of the way, birds. Excellent, so we're going to keep rumbling through this. This little uh, field won't take us too long to do. We'll uh, come back and have a review when we're all said and done and then we'll be making our way down to the yard. Let's see, let's see what awaits us, shall we? Okay, then, folks, just like that, we are done. Really didn't take too long at all. Get that trailer out there. I'm gonna take the truck back down because we're gonna need that a little bit more today. And there's a little bit more spraying uh, that we might have to do up here. Uh, so we'll just leave the class up here for the rest of the day, I think. Uh, it's really not that far away to come and pick it back up later on. I just need to get someone to give me a lift. Uh, and yeah, so we've got our little, um, we've got our IBC tanks on the back at the moment. This could be our makeshift uh, sprayer tanker, really. Uh, it does the job, it does everything that we need. Uh, and yeah, we'll maybe one day we'll look at kind of improving that, getting something with which can actually uh, uh, do a job as a spray in Bowser. But for now, I think that's very much unnecessary. Um, but yeah, we really need to get on and get these verges trimmed one more time as well soon. That might be a job for us later on this afternoon if we can get around to it. Uh, but we will see. I uh, have to see how long this fertilizer spread is going to take. Uh, but yeah, like I said, we're really starting to get a, little, a few little different jobs on the go at the moment. We're going to be spreading some fertilizer for a sheep farmer who's getting some silage mowed down. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a nice little job for us to do there. And yeah, starting to get the name spread around a bit, which is always fantastic news when you're trying to establish yourself in a new region. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to continue to do that as much as possible. And um, yeah, with the, help of, with the help of Philip there, with my landlord, uh, we're really in a... In a better position actually to, to push on, so that's good. That is very, very good. We'll see how that goes as well. Hopefully we can get a little bit more work here and there. Okay, nothing coming. So I did have a phone call just before I started the drive that the uh, there is a, a convoy en route to us, which is possibly some of the most exciting words you can ever, uh, ever hear. So I don't see anything yet, but it must be on its way. I'm going to swing into here, back into the yard for now anyway. Cows are looking good over the fence there. They really are looking healthy. Uh, we'll park this here for now. Contractor still hasn't come back to pick up the rest of that rubble yet, which is very annoying. Uh, but yeah, we'll figure that one out. And that's my chariot coming uh, awaiting me very shortly. So we're going to be out in the fast track there. Um, but before we do that, let's so we're on the lookout for this convoy. Uh, let's see what we've got going there. Not sure which direction it's coming from, really. But I would say with a pretty good guess that that is it. Oh, Lord, look at the size of that thing there. That's a lot of flashing lights and a lot of uh, a lot of red coming down that road, people. And I'm fairly sure the eagle eyed amongst you will be able to see just what we've got going on right now. That is our new header. Look at that. Which can only mean that this brute coming up behind is the brand new, well, brand new to us combine. Wow. It's bigger than I thought it was going to be, people. It is definitely bigger than I thought. Hell yeah. 
heavens, that is huge. Alright then, well. Uh, I suppose we'll go and speak with the driver. And we'll go and figure out just what we're going to do with this. Uh, and how this is going to work. Okay then folks, so there is a plan in place. We have dropped off the header trailer. And that van is going to kind of block the road out. Uh, this is 7.5 meters wide. As you can see, we've obviously gone for a fence. Uh, 7.5 meter wide cut and reel. And it's going to be plenty big enough for what we need. Uh, but the, obviously the main attraction is what I'm about to go and jump into now. Because I think the low loader driver is just kind of getting himself set up. Looks like he is. Uh, we're just going to unload it here. And then quickly just swing it onto the side of the road. Uh, and that way the uh, truck can get out of here. And we don't have to block the road up anymore. Uh, I think that's the plan. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, it looks huge on that, uh, on the low load there. It looks absolutely colossal. It is a big combine, in my mind at least it's a big combine. It's certainly a wide combine. Had this equipped with some, uh, extra wide Michelin. Oh, get around that. I'm not sure how I can quite get up to here. There we go. It had some uh, extra wide Michelin tires fit onto it, uh, so flotation is not going to be a problem there. Uh, but yeah, we are in our fent combine here. Now this is approximately three seasons old. Uh, no big pardon, two seasons old. And it's got relatively low hours on there, drum hours on there. We're looking at in the realms of about 270. Uh, engine hours is a little bit more there, it's a bit of shade over uh, 400 I believe it is. So there's a lot of engine hours on there for considering the age. Uh, however, still fires over perfectly as you'd expect there, no issues at all. Uh, and I really, yeah, I think it's a grand machine. Really am impressed with it so far. Uh, now, picked this up from, this is from the, the southwest of the UK, um, down there in Cornwall, and it's been brought up. This is by a company called Marwell Machinery who have brought this up. Uh, all we need to do now, I guess, uh, is, well, try and get it off here without crashing the blooming thing, I suppose. So we're just going to try and go straight back. God, the la the my neighbours in the houses here mustn't know what's hit them. Oh, easy does it. Alright, just keep easy now. Easy enough. I can't see a thing out of these mirrors there, so it looks like... It looks like we're on the ground actually now. Perfect. So it's been a few years since I drove a combine. When I was going through my um, agricultural studies, uh, I was shipped out to a uh, to a, a, a large, uh, I think it's about two and a half thousand acre farm, where I did get some time on the combine there. But it has been a while. Uh, so this one, uh, that was a Lexan that I was driving then, not a Fent. So we're gonna have to have a look into this one, see what the the similarities and where the differences are. But uh, we're just gonna park that there. And we'll get these trucks out of here, I think. Whoa, where's he going? There he goes. Excellent stuff! And somehow we managed to get rid of that chaos there, and he is away. And there we go. Fantastic. I am over the moon with this. Cannot believe it's finally arrived. So we're going to let that uh, low loader just drift away into the distance. So like I say, we're on the FN 6275 here. Uh, this has been adapted a little bit. It has the boosted turbo on the engine, which produces out, I think it's 306 horsepower. Um, and we have a slightly extended grain capacity in here as well. So the tank, would you believe, can hold just slightly under 10 ton, which is very impressive. Uh, that's why I opted to get the, the wider... Uh, opted for the wider wheels on the front and the rear just to give us a little bit of extra grip uh, so what we need to do is we're going to just shove this around the corner into our uh, yard for now I am supposed to be uh, parking this up at a, a neighbor's yard I'm just trying to agree a lease to uh, to stick it into one of their sheds for now but we'll get this uh, we'll get this just shoved out of the way get it off the main street at least Okay, so as you can see, it's beautifully kept inside here. It looks really tidy. I'm just going to start it up again. Fantastic. On the side here, we have a joystick, which has all of our header controls on there. It can set off our uh, most of our main controls. We've got the auger. We've got unload and low. We've got the uh, reel on the front there, and we've got GPS as well. And then on the side, we have our two PTOs on the armrest there for the... 
for the feeder, well, for the reel and for the thresher. Uh, and then we've got a few controls on the side that we need to get into as well. I suspect they are to do with uh, start stop of things like the straw chopper and adjusting various uh, speeds. Uh, but what we're going to do is just take this around the corner. Like I say, as long as we can get it into the main, uh, off the main road for now, that'll be fine. We'll, yeah, we'll just stick it in head first for now. Very excited to get this into the field though. So at the moment, obviously, we've got our own work. Uh, I have budgeted this off, uh, like I said, it is a higher purchase agreement. We have this on uh, uh, this agreement for three years. So we don't own it, we're just leasing it for three years. Uh, I've budgeted that off being able to... Um, able to contract cut at least uh, 300 to 400 acres a year. So... Uh, I haven't stretched myself too much in terms of our requirements, but it's enough to allow us to get a sufficient amount done whilst kind of hopefully building on our own work as well. Uh, yeah, but for now, like I say, with space is the premium, we'll just stick it into here. I'm not going to block anything or anyone in the way if I just kind of leave it about here. Perfect. Uh, there we go, folks. I think you'll agree. It does look fantastic. Let me know down below in the comments what you uh, what you think of this. I, for one, think it's absolutely stunning. Uh, I think it's going to be a real, real game changer for what we need here. Uh, just got to find somewhere to store it first. Uh, this is what I was mentioned about shed space as well. As it stands right now, we are pretty full in here. And it's a little bit awkward to get things in and out of, so we need to... Uh, we need some space to uh, to try and move into. Now, someone was mentioning in the comments that we should knock down if this uh, and kind of put a shed here. I'd love to, it would be great, but these are actually listed buildings, so we're not allowed to knock those down. We need to try and think of another alternative. Uh, we could nearly have space if we put something along here, though, so we might have to have a look into that. Uh, but we'll see. That's a conversation for another day. Uh, what we need to do now, though, is we need to go and get ourselves out and a way to go and start spreading some fertilizer. Uh, so, we'll just get this fired up, let it take over for a moment or two. Okay, so let's just spread her up there, get my flashing lights on. Fantastic. And off we go. So we're heading actually not too far away, just a short little drive. Uh, they've got everything they need over there, I do believe, but it's going to be just something for us to... I think we've got about 40 acres and totally one spreading grass on two, which really won't take too long at all. Oh, there we go there. Fantastic stuff. I do like driving in this fast track. It's a beautiful machine to be working in. Really, really is there. Things, any kind of field work as well, is so adapted that it really doesn't struggle. And when you're doing something like fertilizer spreading and you need to get from field A back to the yard to field B quickly, I think this is the perfect machine for it. I really do. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to get this done this evening, then we might jump back out and do a little bit of uh, verge mowing this evening as well. But uh, lots to be getting on with, that's for sure, and we'll try our best to get across it all. Uh, for now, though, I think what we'll do is we'll leave it here, we've got a lot to kind of get going with, so I'll just uh, have at it. And we'll come back to you later on in the week with another update. So for now, thank you ever so much for watching. I have been Andy, your humble host. I do hope you have enjoyed. Uh, if you have, as always, don't forget to hit that like button. Smash that subscribe button to Simulation for the Nation, and we will see you in the next one. So until then, have yourself a great rest of your day. Enjoy what you're doing as always, but most importantly, happy farming.